First, though, the Pentagon has awarded a fuel contract worth more than $300 million to supply its Manas Air Base in Kyrgyzstan to a corporation that's under investigation by the U.S. Congress. The company won't disclose its ownership, but there's speculation that the family of the ousted Kyrgyz president, Bakiev, might be involved. To, uh, to talk more about this now, we go live to our Washington studio. We're joined by Ivan Elin, director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute. Good to talk to you, Mr. Elin. So what do you make of these allegations and the involvement of the Bakia family? Do you think they're true? Well, they could be, of course. The U.S. Uh, has in the past cut deals for bases and uh, uh, lucrative contracts go to the country involved. Uh, the CIA could be involved. It could be, there could be a lot of things going on here. The congressional investigation is not, apparently the report is not going to say there's any wrongdoing, but th this is a very suspicious contract um, uh, because it was single source. There was no competition and the companies beat out more established fuel providers. So, and also the, the operators of the company are, avoid the press. Uh, one of them did testify before Congress, but the other one, uh, he won't uh, give interviews to the media or, uh, and he runs away from, uh, he, he didn't show up at the congressional hearings, et cetera, even though they subpoenaed him. So there's a lot of uh, mystery around this. So I think anything is possible in this case, and uh, it could be a payoff for the U.S. Uh, to use the base. And of course, that was when uh, the old regime was in power. That uh, military, uh, that gentleman you were talking about lives in California. His name's Douglas Edelman, I understand. He used to run a hamburger joint in Bishkek uh, that I'm uh, reading here in the Washington Post article on this. So do you think it's a coincidence that the U.S. military presence in Kyrgyzstan in the form of this base has become embroiled in this criticism for the American support of the Bakiev regime? Or do you think that was more of a marriage of convenience? He had the base in the country and they had to work with him. Well, I think they, it's a strategic base because it provide all the troops that fly into Afghanistan fly through the base. It also provides a refueling for um, fighter jets that are in Afghanistan. So it's a very critical base. And of course, the routes, the supply routes through Pakistan are endangered by the Taliban. And so it becomes even more important. So I think, you know, when you're in a war, uh, you do anything you have to, to uh, to keep bases, and this is a, this base has been uh, c controversial for a long time. And uh, um, two two leaders of Kyrgyzstan have fallen because of these fuel deals. So uh, you know, you would think the U.S. would uh, be more careful, but I think what you're seeing is the fact that the, these fuel deals are to pay for the base uh, being there. So the MENA Corporation, which is one of two, including another one called Red Star, that got the contract, now they're under investigation by Congress. Do you think it's even possible that we, they were still awarded these huge sums of money? How was that possible? Uh, was there just not good oversight, or where did the system break down? Well, it seems to be that uh, from what the draft report of the Congress uh, says that there's, there's been no illegalities. However, that doesn't mean when you give out a sole source uh, contract uh, that foreign policy um, uh, issues don't take precedence over competition, which I think is what's happened. I mean, you, as you mentioned, the guy who was running a hamburger stand, these people had no um, experience in transporting or storing uh, flammable uh, fuels, and yet they have uh, beat out uh, experienced competitors. I mean, the, the circumstantial evidence that there's something going on here is overwhelming. And uh, But it may not be a question of criminality. I mean, they may be, uh, you know, working for the U.S. government uh, in some respect or uh, being uh, uh, allowed to do this because the U.S. government wants to funnel this money and uh, keep the base. The investigation was started right after Bakiev was ousted from power. What do you make of the timing? Why do you think the U.S. tolerated these corrupt deals before, and how far were they willing to go to keep the air base in Kyrgyzstan? Well, I think, you know, the Congress is a separate branch of government from the executive branch. And I think uh, they probably thought, well, you know, uh, this guy has been deposed, so uh, we can start investigating this and see, what, see what's there, see if this was a payoff. Because the Congress likes to know what the executive branch is doing. So I think it probably, they probably didn't want to monkey around too much when uh, uh, he was the leader of the country. But when he was deposed, they said, 
uh, well, we have a little bit more freedom to look into what the executive branch is doing. Now, I don't necessarily know that they're going to find anything because they may have uh, found a way uh, or they may have discovered the way that the U.S. keeps the base, and they've decided to uh, uh, not uh, publicize it for national security reasons or whatever. But certainly, this doesn't. These types of um, uh, uh, contracts, whether they're actually illegal, is one thing, and whether they're corrupt is another thing. And I think what we're seeing is uh, corruption. But I think uh, in the United States. Uh, the executive branch might have, uh, 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 you know, the legal authority to do something like this, that they think it's in the U.S. security interest to d do what they have to do to keep this vital base. And I think, you know, when you have a war going on, uh, the rules bend or uh, new rules are made or whatever to do these things. And I think this is a very, this is clearly a vital base. And uh, this, I think, is part of the compensation package for Kyrgyzstan one way or the other. And the base itself, do you believe that it is the sole uh, purpose of it to support the U.S. operation in Afghanistan? Or do you think it has anything to do with the influence in the former Soviet space? Well, I think it's. I think the second one is there too. Obviously, the first uh, uh, objective is to fight the war. But of course, uh, the Russians and the U.S. have been competing for influence in this country. They have bases not too far from each other, and so I think certainly the U.S. has been planting other flags uh, in the Central Asian and Caucasus region and around uh, the Russian perimeter. And so I don't think it's uh, necessarily a coincidence uh, that, that, that uh, this base serves two purposes. This is certainly a, a second purpose of the base, is to uh, just one more area where the U.S. is trying to seek influence in the near abroad of Russia. Finally, the contract was granted despite the appeal of the current Kyrgyz leadership to stop using contractors and resort to a Russian-Kyrgyz joint supplier instead. How do you think this might affect the new U.S.-Kyrgyz relations? Well, that sort of mystifies me that uh, that's another mystery as to why it, you, you're no longer trying to cultivate the government because the government was deposed by this contract. So why continue this sort of thing? There must be something... Uh, else going on here. Some people have speculated that it's a CIA front company uh, doing other things. I don't know uh, exactly what it is myself, but it certainly seems that uh, once the old regime was deposed, uh, giving this contract in, these, in this manner would not be a, in the U.S. interest anymore, at least on the overt level. But we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, and that's the real uh, problem here. Certainly, uh, competitive bidding wasn't uh, followed in this contract. All right. Ivan Elin, senior fellow and uh, director of the Center of Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute. Good to talk to you.